Ah, hello, Go fans. So, actually, let's do some news for. Let's just do like, not news, business. Let's do business. Yeah. Uh, so tomorrow, I'm flying out to California, to San Diego for the 2017 U.S. Go Congress, and I'm really excited. Uh, because first of all, Go Congresses are amazing. If you've never been to one, uh, imagine just going to some place for a week and hanging out with, you know, 500 other people where you all just sit around and play games and go of Go and uh, hang out, learn about Go, attend workshops from real Go professionals that they, you know, flew over here from, you know, most often East Asia. Uh, again, this year, I've never been to San Diego. I've been to actually, I think, almost all the major cities in California. Uh, except San Diego, so I'm really excited about visiting this one. You can see all the, the cool attractions. Um, and, uh, you know, on the website, if you look at pros, another reason to be excited this year, in particular for this U.S. Go Congress, if you look at the list of professionals who, who are coming, uh, I think we have six Nindon professionals. That's amazing. Like, I don't think that's ever happened before. I think this is a new record for the U.S. Go Congress to have six Nindon professionals in addition to all the other pros, uh, including the recent, you know, U.S. and Canadian pros, and again, some of the teaching favorites like Mingju, Jiang, and Yulin Yang, uh, and Ryo Maida, right? Those are pros that come almost every year uh, and give, you know, really riveting workshops and, you know, are, tend to be kind of like fan favorites. Uh, but anyway, I'm, you know, this is going to be awesome. So if you're there and uh, you see me, you know, come say hi. I always need more friends, so, you know, come be my friend. And if you're there on Friday, I'm also giving a teacher's workshop where you should definitely come to. It's called Nixabiki Super Happy Fun Time Explosion Hour. And I'll be sometime Friday afternoon. I don't quite uh, know where I am on the schedule yet. Although every day at the Go Congress, you know, you wake up, you go play in the U.S. Open, uh, which is the big sort of national tournament and everyone plays in it who's registered. And uh, then you just look at the schedule, the daily activities, and there's just a ton of stuff on the schedule every day. Um, from pro workshops to teachers workshops like the one I'm giving, uh, but also other tournaments. Every day ha usually has some other extra sort of bonus tournament, um, be it like a 9x9 or a 13 or a blitz tournament or crazy go, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. I think, I think you know, this is a pretty awesome uh, time. I know not everyone can be there. Uh, a lot of people can't spare a week of vacation time. Um, you know, but if you can and, you know, hey, you want to go play Go for a week, this is this is the way to do it. A lot of uh, the people who actually go to the U.S. Congress actually aren't from the United States because a lot of the other countries, even the major Go playing countries, don't have something like this in their own country. Uh, even, you know, they might have Go clubs, you know, in every city and uh, and have no problem finding a real game. They don't actually have an event quite like this. So uh, it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. And hey, I hope to see you there. Anyway, uh, oh, I should also just just make a note that uh, so I'm, I'm my class, my usual you know double digit Q class at the Seattle Go Center, uh, is off for the month of August, and so uh, this week uh, I'll really mainly be posting just little update, little like almost vlog videos from the Go Congress, like real short little just you know updates of cool things. Uh, so please you know tune in for those, and if you don't care, then don't. That's fine too. And what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So once I get back from the ESCO Congress, because I don't have my class, most of my most of my Go lectures for the next few weeks will probably revolve around the things that I've learned at the Go Congress. Uh, so even if you're not there, I hope that you know you'll be able to take away something from it, at least through through you know my lens, through my eyes, through my own abilities, and so you can feel like you're part of part of it that way. All right. But let's do some Go today, because uh, that's probably why you're watching this video. And I've got three situations queued up here. I'm going to take a sip of tea first. Uh, this was a free sample of tea that I was given, actually. It's kind of fruity. I don't drink a lot of fruity tea. Like a papaya white tea or something. Okay. Uh, but here, let's take a look at some situations. Uh, they're all about trick moves. And here, I'm just going to put up a situation. We're really just going to focus on the right-hand side of the board for, for this first one. So you can pretend whatever happened over here happened over here. I mean, you can just imagine something like that, but whatever. Uh, this is normal, right? Approach, back off, uh, and then black 
builds a, a moyo type of structure. White approaches over here. Uh, and then black's gonna pull back. And so far, this is like super normal, right? You shouldn't be frightened or scared or even think there's a trick move here. Uh, but there is, because white's gonna play here. And normally, like I think a Q, if you're a Q player, like this doesn't even seem strange to you. This is like, this is just a normal move. Uh, but you have to remember a couple things. Number one, uh, a, this high invasion is really weird. Like it's it's a, it's actually quite a strange um, type of pincer when we're pincering a, a weakish group. Um, it's also weird just because there's another black stone right behind it, like we're already going into an enemy strong spot. Usually if you're gonna invade this side, we usually see this type of move. This is usually a stronger point to invade from because you have more friends nearby. So we can actually put a lot more pressure on this black stone. Um, it's, it's, it's a, this is just a weird move. You don't normally see this in normal play. Uh, so I'm going to call this the trick move. Although, uh, once you see the next white move, you, everyone's going to say, oh, that's the trick move. Because, if you know, this is this is just the start of the sequence. And it looks very innocuous. And I like, I like this sequence as a trick move just because it looks so innocuous. It just looks so normal. Uh, now, how black starts to get tricked here, and this isn't fully tricked, this is only like... 20% tricked, <laughs> and uh, because if black can still sort of get out of it at this point, but black's is going to attach here, and this looks like it makes sense. Keep all the stones connected, build territory, you know, don't let white get any further in. It's very natural, very natural, but white's next move is here, and this is where, you know, people go like, oh, you know, your eyes might get wide and go, wait, is this a trick move? This looks like a trick move. And yes, yes, this is now a trick move that was set up by this stone. You do need this stone for this trick move to work in this case. So black, what do you do? Well, a natural move, just cover, right? Looks completely normal. But aha, time for the trick sequence. White plays here. Uh, at this point, black could do something like this. This is not the trick sequence, by the way, but this is just... It just looks pretty sad for, for black here to be cut here, and now for this weak black group to just be cut off from its friends. Um, this white stone actually still has a little bit of Aji. <laughs> There's still this little corner invasion and reduction we can do later. Um, but this this is this is like black avoiding the trick sequence. That's not the that's not the sequence you guys came here to see. You guys want to see what happens when black cuts here. Because this is this is how black has now gotten completely tricked. And if you want to try to take five seconds and see what's about to happen to black, I would do that right now while I take another sip of my fruity white papaya tea. Yeah, so white's going to take this Atari. And then white's going to take this Atari. And then white's going to push down. And in this case, we have two weak black two stone groups, but hey, we could link them together with this Atari, right? Wrong. <laughs> this doesn't really work. Uh, Black, what do you want to do? Do you want to take this stone? Well, then white's just going to Atari here. And you realize that connecting is real bad. Like, real bad. Because uh, white can actually throw in here, take another Atari, and just extend right here. And you can say, hey, I can get, I can get one more move out of this. Well, kinda, uh, except we have a huge problem now for this black group. This is just really hard to deal with. Uh, if, here, we'll, 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 we'll return to that variation. I just wanna show you another thing black can do here. At this point, black can just, you know, take a stone and let white capture these. And there isn't quite as much trouble over here, but this is this would be a fantastic result for white. I just want to show you this would be like just like almost game over for white. If white gets a live group in the middle of black's territory, so this is still weak, and this is actually not 100% alive either. Okay, so going back here, uh, white can just run the stone out, and we can just keep running the stone out. And at this point, um, white actually has a couple options here. I think this is the strongest one. Uh, black will like, I mean, of course, any other Atari doesn't work here, right? This has three liberties, black only has two, this has three liberties. 
So black would need to do something like this. Black also can't do this because there's just this snapback, right? Kills the whole thing. So we need to run this out. Uh, and at this point, white can play over here and then go after this stone or finish off the Aji over here. Um, but basically white's going to get, you know, imagine again if white had this corner, these two stones are not going to be able to be uh, <laughs> livable. Again, if, especially if white takes another another stone, another move here. Uh, black can't really save these very easily. Actually, white would probably play here. Oh, that's a big motorcycle, I guess. <laughs> Whoa, no, don't do that. Um, and so anyway, this 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 little, you know, <laughs> whole right hand side of blacks uh, gets greatly reduced, and white gets a huge amount of influence on the outside. Um, alternatively, instead of using this Aji right away, uh, white can white can actually ask a few questions here. There's a few options for the for white determining the order, um, because if white really wants these two stones, uh, white could also move this stone out first, and then Atari. And now you can see that uh, white just Atari's and Atari's black can't ever save this. So again, if white really doesn't want to wall up here, or doesn't want to give up, you know, any sort of extra Aji over here, white can white white doesn't mind giving up an extra stone in the corner. White can also do this first. Um, but no matter what, uh, this formation for black is really weak, and will get pushed around. We have a similar kind of situation on this side, uh, where we can just uh, start doing this sequence. And again, same thing. If white, if, um, whoops, not yet. If black Atari is this way, we again we capture these four and probably eat the entire corner. If black plays here, we can make this exchange once, and then push out again. Uh, and again, black has to crawl really slowly. Uh, we want, if we want to, we can ask right away. But probably what we're going to do is this move right here, just to get these out. Uh, black really can't save these two stones. You have no time if black tries. There's a few like, you know, kind of things you can try. Uh, but white can actually just play here and capture these four directly. Again, black can never connect because that's Atari. Or you know, there's basically going to be some sort of exchange. So in this area, let's go back. A little bit of ways, where we have four black stones in this area. For white to get in here and first of all either kill something or just basically in completely enclose or cover uh, any of this black uh, is going to be a good time for white, right? Just from this sequence right here. It's very nice. Duke, duke, duke. And then black sort of has to pick how this is going to go down. Uh, so, yeah, this little trick sequence right here is very cool. All right, let's look at another one. Another way for you to get yourself into all kinds of trouble. Uh, white approach. And white plays here. Again, this is very common in handicap games. And probably the most normal response we see is this move, where white's very aggressively approaching this black strong corner, and now white has two weak stones on the outside, and black has a bunch of solid territory. Uh, this trick move for white is not, um, it's, it's, I think it's underappreciated by the Q community, but it's definitely a fun one to play. And that move is right here. And in this case, right, if we look at this group, this group isn't quite um, weak enough for white to actually live in here. And that's sort of the problem, right? Black can always come in and kill. But what we can do is we can lean on it, again, if black just submits, we can actually get quite nice thickness and get our two weak stones linked up. And uh, you can say, hey, but this stone's in trouble. Yeah, who cares? This is not real trouble, right? It's still just all linked up. Uh, probably the strongest cut, I think, is... No, we can't do that. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Maybe this way. This might be the strongest way to cut through here. Um, but you can see if black tries this cut, um, white's actually not going to have too much of a problem, uh, you know, getting some sort of 
uh, compensation out of this. Like even if we just capture this stone, uh, you know, white got a lot stronger over here, and can has actually has time because of this Aji to make a base up here. So even then, that's fine. Uh, so this shape though, uh, it's actually a little bit over concentrated for black in the corner and white has all this influence to use. So this is a good result for white. It doesn't look like it to most Q players, but it is. So is there any other choices for black? It's really hard to see them. In this case, most of the time, black should actually play here um, and should actually fight his way out. Uh, white, if white just runs out, this is, this is not a happy <laughs> shape for white um, because now if you look at it, it's it's almost whoops if we yeah that would be a move too if black if white plays here it's almost the exact same result except we ex black got to exchange this stone for this stone which is a great exchange for black right if you go back to the previous variation and black now plays this stone white's never going to extend here white's just going to give up the stone All right so this is actually much more palatable for black. Uh, if white extends, you know, we can actually have time to fight, which is a big deal. Uh, if white, on the other hand, goes this way, well, we can fight this way too. It's a little bit more difficult, um, but we can. We do have to keep uh, strong here. And there's actually a couple of variations, and I don't know them all very well, uh, but black is perfectly able to fight. Uh, I, I, I presume this one's better. I'm actually not 100% sure. Uh, black can, or white can try to live, you know, in the corner here. Um, but if we just play normal looking, if we just extend there, this doesn't actually make life. Um, what else can white try? White can play this one. Uh, that one's more promising, actually. I'm not, I think this one looks like Ko, actually. Um... Let's make this exchange and connect. It looks fairly co-ish. I could be wrong. No, that's alive, huh? Uh, we just play there. Mm, have to play there. I haven't read this out before. So that just looks kind of... Uh, Looks like it's Seki, but it's not actually Seki. White has one too many liberties. Hmm. Um, but assuming white needs to live in Gote, uh, black again gets really nice thickness if white tries to live there. Again, there might be other sequences. Yeah, I guess you have to play that one. Uh, any other options? Uh, if we just... I mean, we can just <laughs> connect at this point and then go Tay. Or uh, it's almost like Sente, I guess it's like Ko for. If white, if white makes this, this would be a Ko shape. But just take the thickness, play a big move, take the, the entire outside. Also nice. So, yeah, maybe. This might prevent some of that, but there's a whole bunch of other reading that needs to happen here. That's quite dangerous. Because uh, now, how does white live? Because this one doesn't work now. But maybe this this is why maybe this is why you play this one instead of the other one. Sorry if I'm learning this as you guys are learning it. I just I just <laughs> know the sequence as a trick move and haven't explored all the variations like I should have. Yeah, it's really actually. Hard to kill this shape. Hmm. Is there any way to kill this? It almost looks like this works. All right. If it goes like that, that works. You just have to win a capturing race, which actually I don't think you can win. Um, I don't know, but you would, 
be able to take that. So that would work there. Although actually, if it goes, if we have to play this move, then white has this sequence to get out. But again, this would be a pretty terrible result for white actually if it went like this, because now we have a really weak group over here and weak group over here. I feel like I'm missing some things. Uh, what happens if we just get liberties? And now we cut here. Feels like you have to play that one. If we just go straight up to liberties... Oh, we can just live anyway, in this case. Uh, play there. I would play here. And that almost works. Actually, it might work well enough. Whoops. Depending on this capturing race. And actually, this capturing no, this capturing race, white needs to move there. So white has to play there. And again, maybe black had time to take that. I wasn't really paying enough attention. Um, yeah, this actually looks good for white. All right, black doesn't quite have enough liberties. Hmm. Well, that's neat. <laughs> that's neat. So in this case, maybe <laughs> black just defends. White has to play a move that lives. And again, black gets the entire outside. Still good result for black. Again, we were just sort of investigating whether or not black could kill and get the outside. So that's a cool move. Do note that it, you really do need like this stone to make it work, because when you play here, um, you're really threatening to push through and take the corner, which is why black doesn't want to counter with any of this. Um, this stone is very helpful in supporting this shape. Uh, and this stone is also very useful, right? In order to get actually a good result, you really need to be able to do something with this uh, influence. And so linking it up to this stone is actually really nice because white just projects all this influence throughout this part of the board. All right, so that's two sort of tricky situations. Let's look at one more. This will be the last one for today. And I know already a lot of you guys are just groaning because you're looking at a 5-4 situation. You can just say, I don't play 5-4 in my games. And I'm going, uh-huh, well, here, if you know a trick move, maybe you will. So black plays here. Again, this is the normal Joseki continuation. Or black's just asking for influence for giving white the corner. Again, white just takes the corner. And uh, there's a couple of normal Joseki variations uh, for black to continue, the most common of which are here and here. Uh, are also here. I guess all those are quasi-continuations. Um, but A is, A is by far the most prevalent you're going to see. Uh, but the move for Black's going to try here is this one. And this is really devilish kind of move. Um, this is actually even played in pro games. Uh, not that many, but a few. Um, as a Joseki, even though it's technically a trick move. Um, black plays this when, for just given the timing of the board, basically black has started a Joseki in this corner, um, but wants to Tanuki real badly. And so this move kind of goads white into um, just letting black Tanuki. But uh, let's play it Q style. So Q style says, hey, let's just keep playing all this territory. And white just got tricked. Because black is going to cut here now. And if white takes this cut, we extend. If white saves these two stones, black comes here. And now there's basically no hope for this white weak group. It's really hard to get that white, white weak group out. Like even if white comes down, um, black just blocks here. And if white jumps out this way, we actually just attach here. And uh, if white captures a stone, we actually just perfectly capture it. We have the corner points, and we have central influence, and a weak white group to go chase. Although black, white will need to fix it right now. Then we can start harassing this Panuki that's a little bit too close to our strength. So that was cool. Let's go back and look at that again. Uh, how did this happen? Well, when black plays here, 
white really just needs to pull back. And in fact, if black continues playing, this is Joseki. I just played out of order. Normally, I'll put numbers out. We would expect this Joseki to black here. White goes here. Black makes the knight's jump. White attach. Black Hane. White pull back. Black fix. White fix. Um, eight is often tanukied. White is left out. Um, but if you don't play it, you're going to get sealed in in Sente. So it's worth a lot of points, it's and it's worth a lot of influence in this part of the board. Um, if black can make this in a territory, you'll almost always see white play this. If this territory is disputed, uh, you probably won't see white play this. Uh, so that's the normal sequence. We just didn't do it that way. We just played here. Um, so this is, the, you know, if you're a cube player and you're playing 5-4 against other cube players, um, this is probably the easiest trick move of all these to get off. Um, because probably the first Joseki, 5-4 Joseki that Q players learn is going to be this one, right? And play at A. So when you play here, whoa, that's weird. And actually, if you're a Q player, they probably think you don't know Joseki. So they're like, aha, I'm getting more free stuff. And that's where you teach them a lesson. Such sads for this white group. So anyway, I think all three of these tricky situations are cool. You know, they all do something that's a little bit unexpected. You know, make either be it make a cut that you didn't think actually worked, um, or you know, play a weird looking invasion <laughs> uh, like here, or uh, play a real crude looking attachment in order to get thickness, in order to force your opponent to thickness. Oh, actually, one other question. I know someone's going to ask this question. When white plays here, why doesn't black play here? Isn't this a great move? Doesn't that look great? Yes? Doesn't that look awesome? Kind of, right? Except uh, this leaves so much Aji. Uh, there's actually a few options for how white can play this now. Um, and again, it might white might need to fix first and then come back and play these. But just to show you some of the things to exploit, uh, first of all, there's this cut. Uh, maybe even white can do this. Can white do this right away? What happens if black double Ataris? Uh, white can... No, white can't really do this right away. I think white should fix once first. Uh, so probably right there. And again, because of moves like this, um, it's really hard for black to come out. Are you going to fix this way? And just have to push it on the second line? I don't know. That's a lot of thickness for white. That's a lot of free stuff. Um, alternatively, uh, let's say, let's see, white, oops, no, don't close. Um, if, white, if black does Tanuki's entirely, or actually, even if black does this, let's see, let's, this move is actually probably better. Instead of peeping, we play this first. Oh, this is, this is probably only better if um, black doesn't get more liberties of this stone. Because uh, in this case... Uh, black can capture the corner, though it's real, real not clean. <laughs> right, you can actually see white can get up to three or four liberties here. So black has to keep pushing on this side. Um, yeah, if we play here. Um, the other thing we can do is we can actually, if we want to, if we, if we know we just want the right-hand side to seal it off, um, we can just play this way and just fix immediately. And now all this white... Uh, you know, black might be able to get out here, but we already have this and this. This is just another way for white to very crudely and simply use the Aji to turn that white territory into a, or uh, the white white right side into an instant moyo. Uh, of course, if black comes in here, uh, we still have a move to seal, and this is very similar to the game, um, except white was actually able to seal off uh, this connection. So that's cool. All right, anyway, uh, these are three tricky situations. I suggest you try them out on your unsuspecting foes. 
And uh, if you guys are going to the Go Congress, I hope to see you there. So thanks for watching and look for my Go Congress updates uh, next week. <laughs>